Hello, everyone. So hello again from our side, too. And welcome to our presentation. First of all, uh, I'm glad to say that it's an amazing experience to be here and uh, share our insight and experiences um, and what we did uh, and tried out. And uh, I'm glad to see a full house <laughs> today. Um, so uh, as announced, uh, we will talk about uh, game up Game play, game uh, free-to-play games uh, optimization uh, f uh, for LTV and retention with Firebase. But uh, first, uh, let us tell you a few words about ourselves and a bit about uh, our company. I'm Maria Spasic, and I'm project management manager at uh, Pixel. Hi, from my side, uh, my name is Dusan, and I work at Pixel as game designer. So uh, this is our um, ab something about Pixel. We are a video games development and publishing company uh, based in Niš, Serbia. We are a team of 60 people and founded in 2012. So uh, during those 10 years, uh, we made a portfolio of uh, 200 apps and games, uh, and we have um, around half a billion uh, installs. So this is our agenda for today. Uh, first, we will start, uh, or Dushan will start with uh, introduction about our case study for today. Those are uh, room escape games. Then he will talk about gameplay optimization. I will continue with ad optimization. And at the end, of course, we will have a summary. So Dushan, the stage is yours. Thank you, Maria. So you probably know this type of games, but we will start with short overview of key, key features. So uh, these games are basically logic puzzles in which players uh, need to can uh, interact with different items, can solve some mini games, uh, break codes, and all that in order to open the door. Uh, the gameplay is linear, uh, and we have uh, in our games between 100 and 150 levels. Uh, the uh, in our games, there are two kinds of help. So we have hints and skips. Hint shows one, one step in gameplay, and with skip, player can skip level or can skip whole minigame. Uh, and these two are main driving factors of our in-game economy. And uh, at the end of the level, uh, when players sol solve everything, doors opens, and the player enters new area, and always with empty inventory, so that means that uh, levels are not connected with each other. <coughs> so let's start with some optimization. Uh, when we prepare in the game before the launch, we write and put all our events in in, uh, in the game for data tracking. But from the gameplay standpoint, the we will mention today the two main ones. So the first one is level completed. You can see on the left side of the screen. So those are simple events we have. Uh, level completed for all our levels. So with them, we can easily create funnels to see drop-off rate uh, with uh, with these events. And the second one is uh, a bit complicated. Uh, those are, we call them uh, level details because with them, we use them to divide each level in steps so we could uh, track the drop-off rate inside the levels. And how we create them, we name uh, those levels, we put the details in the end of the name of the level, and we use uh, parameter values to write each step for the, for the for we use uh, parameter values to write each step from the beginning of the level to the last uh, click in, in the levels. And how that works in practice. After the launch, we receive those kinds of reports from our data team. And uh, 
the, ga uh, the game design team needs to detect critical dropouts to and when we uh, detect those uh, dropouts, we always are tracking the detailed events. You can see this is the example from our uh, one of our games. It's from Escape from Prison, and this is from uh, the first version of Soft Launch. And as you can see, there are a lot of red critical <laughs> dropout points, so it was rocky start for us, but we managed to fix that, and we will show you how. And for all of those, we we, uh, we check always detailed events. So uh, the approach with detailed events is very similar. So we, again, use the report, and we, again, identify critical steps. So, for example, in our games, it can be, for example, some item is hidden too much, or some item is too small, or uh, players cannot solve some code, or break some code, so we assume that the clue for the, the code is, isn't clear enough. <coughs> so, I'm sorry. <coughs> so we, after analyzing the critical steps, we suggest corrections, we implement them, and again, we check the new results after the update to see if there's any improvement. And on the right side, you can see a report for uh, detail events report for the first level from Escape from Prison. Uh, as, as you can, see, you saw that uh, there there was uh, almost 28 percent dropout in after the first level, so it was a big hit, but uh, we uh, managed to, to to improve that. So, as you can see on the screen, we lost almost uh, one quarter of the players on the intro dialogue. So, we did what we could. We changed the, we shortened the intro dialogue, dialogue with because it was too long. Uh, we changed the character render on the dialogue, and. Our approach in, in this game was that, from the gameplay standpoint, we wanted to put as many mechanics as we can, so uh, in to put tutorials for them. But the level was too long, so we cut off all this part and move to another level. Uh, so with those changes, we managed to decrease the drop off, uh, the dropout rate from 28% uh, to 6%. And uh, this approach ap uh, uh, applies for all levels, but especially for uh, the onboarding process and for first, let's say, 10 to uh, 20 levels. Okay, let's proceed. <coughs> so uh, the next thing we uh, we are using uh, uh, Firebase uh, is uh, of course A/B testing. So here we will show you one of our gameplay test tests. So this is the level order test. So we never rely on one level order in our games. So when we finish with the polishing part, we always experiment with few versions to find the the best one. Uh, and uh, we always, when we run this kind of tests, uh, the main metrics, in the estimated <coughs> data is always LTV, <coughs> but we always keep in mind the retention. So this is the example from our game Escape from Work. This is the three variants of level orders which we implemented in in uh, in that test, and uh, we always, when we run a test like that, we are using remote config from uh, in Firebase. We set up, we set up the uh, everything there and run a test. And this is the results. As you can see, the second variant outperformed uh, others in both metrics. So we roll out this variant for all players. And the next topic is future test. So this is the 
uh, we tested this in our newest game, Hunter Worlds. Uh, so we try to mm, improve our game, to improve our engagement of our players with something like this. So we implemented short dialogues between the levels to try to improve our, <coughs> our engagement. So we divided, the, in test, we divided players in those who had this feature and the ones who didn't. And we again run a test. Oh, again, the estimated data was LTV. And this is the result. With this simple feature, we managed to uplift uh, earnings for 63%. Uh, and we roll out this feature for all our players. And uh, this is from, this is everything from my side. Uh, Mara will continue from now on. Thank you. So our next topic is ad optimization. And uh, when we talk ad optimization, uh, of course we want, or when we talk about free to play games, uh, we want to maximize uh, uh, our revenue and we do this uh, with ads uh, or with uh, in-app purchases. So uh, here we will talk uh, a bit more about uh, ad optimization and uh, of course here uh, we try to, to, to find the best uh, format uh, mix for our games, uh, ad placements, frequency, capping and uh, reward types. Uh, of course, uh, everything to uh, balance uh, and uh, even out uh, revenue, so to maximize it, uh, but not hurt uh, the uh, user engagement and retention. So how do we do that? First, we start uh, with ad formats test. Uh, here, um, this is, uh, the important thing to uh, say here is that uh, in the soft launch phase, uh, we have only uh, the uh, rewarded videos and then after uh, when we finish with gameplay optimization uh, we add uh, also interstitial and other formats so here we in this example we try to find the best uh, mix uh, for our game so we tried only rewarded that we had uh, against rewarded and interstitial rewarded and banner and all three together uh, the results said uh, that uh, we uh, maximize our revenue, so 122% uh, uh, with uh, all three together, and uh, retention dropped a little, uh, but uh, it was um, insignificant because of uh, this percentage for LTV. Uh, so our decision is uh, to roll out uh, the winner variant, so all three uh, ad formats for our escape room games. The next thing, uh, and this is the example uh, for the soft launch. Um, we do that again uh, when we go global, uh, and uh, here uh, the results were almost the same, uh, so we keep this uh, in our game. The next thing is uh, I analyzing uh, ad placements. So here we don't do uh, a B tests, uh, but uh, we measure um, uh, uh, CTR and competition rates. So we have some star standard placements uh, for uh, all three. Uh, for example, for interstitial on level start and level end. Um, for rewarded, as you can see here in the example, spin the wheel, uh, double reward, then in shop some places. Uh, and uh, basically here uh, we measure which placement is good and which placement we need to uh, modify and improve more uh, with uh, our game design uh, or uh, we, we choose some other reward type which I will talk about later. So um, next one uh, that we do is add frequency and capping. Uh, this example is uh, for uh, level-based frequency for interstitial ads. And uh, we usually do this uh, for our room escape games. Uh, 
Uh, here we tested uh, interstitial after two levels uh, against uh, the uh, three levels, four levels, and five levels. And uh, the results, uh, we found out that uh, after three level levels is the best uh, option. So here we improved uh, both uh, metrics, uh, LTV for 63% uh, and retention for 25%. So it's a good decision for us uh, to, to have it after each third level here. The next one is also example for frequency capping, but now for rewarded video. So here we put a cap, uh, uh, so no limits against uh, two impressions per day and also three impressions per day. Uh, and uh, we found out that the best uh, option is um, three impressions per day, even though our attention dropped a little. But with other tests uh, that we do uh, with the gameplay optimization and everything that uh, evens out uh, or even improves uh, our uh, revenue and retention. So we put a cap on uh, three impressions per day uh, for our rewarded videos. So uh, now we come to the reward type and amount test that, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, here we try to find out the best one uh, for our room escape games. And the default uh, version was uh, with the free hint, which equals to 200 uh, coins. And the other variants uh, were double coins, triple coins, and uh, 100 coins. Uh, so uh, this is, of course, after level competition. Uh, and uh, here we found out that 52% uh, uh, difference is for double coins for LTV. So it's, it's uh, much better. Uh, and uh, for retention, insignificant um, drop. So we rolled out uh, the double coins version. Uh, then again, uh, I have one more example here, and it is important to say here that this is for uh, non-watchers, so the users who uh, don't watch uh, rewarded videos. And uh, we tested uh, uh, this uh, with uh, adding more coins for them. So uh, we have here uh, our 100 coins variant and uh, 200 coins variant. Uh, of course, again, it was a goal to increase uh, our LTV. And uh, we found out uh, that for non-watchers, it's better to uh, have um, uh, more of coins uh, for them so that we can engage them more. So you can see the improvement in retention and also in LTV. So of course, uh, we, we did roll out a double coins variant uh, for them. Okay, so to sum everything up, here uh, we have some diagram for you. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, as we said, uh, it is uh, the best to plan your data uh, ahead and also your tests uh, so that you know what you are looking for. Uh, then of course to run those tests, uh, like test, 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 <laughs> and then uh, when you found out uh, which which are the winners and what's the best for your game, uh, you implement that one. And uh, of course, uh, the last step uh, is uh, to observe everything, learn from it, uh, from all the tests you did, even the failed ones, uh, and repeat and iterate until you die. <laughs> so. Uh, as uh, Dushan mentioned, uh, we did, uh, th this is our case study for so all of our escape games and right now we have four of them, you can see them here, and we have three in the making also. Uh, so if you want to uh, make similar game with us and develop and publish it, uh, with us, uh, you we have uh, here something good for you. Uh, so we can uh, you can get from us uh, engine, so the whole engine for Room Escape, 
uh, then education and support for your development team, complete optimization process and the whole process of, of uh, development um, and uh, also 50-50 uh, publishing deal. So these are the major platforms that we do. Uh, and uh, also, uh, I can mention that uh, if you want to do only Nintendo Switch, for example, you can also reach to us uh, and uh, we can make some, uh, some publishing deal for that too and also converting it. Uh, you have here uh, our mail or you can talk to us later. So that's all from our side and thank you for your attention and it was great <laughs> being here. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, your presentation. Do you have any questions? Uh, hello, uh, I'm uh, Julius from TenSquare. I uh, was curious, uh, for how long do you usually run an experiment and do you run multiple experiments at a time or just one at a time? Just one at a time uh, and it depends for each test. I think uh, you, you also have the confidence level uh, on Firebase. So we are looking when we have uh, enough users and uh, when we have like a large percent for it, then we decide to roll it out. I see, and uh, how long does it usually take? Uh, a month or? Usually like less than a month, but uh, it, it really depends on a test and on the users. And uh, do you roll it out to the whole uh, the whole player base? Yeah, usually? the whole player base. When when we are sure, of course, to, to the whole player base. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Thank you. What was the first question again? <laughs> uh, ret retention, I, I said in general because we look at all of them. So uh, like day one, day seven, day 30. Yeah, mostly on average, but uh, sometimes, hmm? sometimes, usually it's day one, but like we look at yeah. general, yeah. And the second one, you can ask our guy from data, or do you, do you want to? I think they use BigQuery, so, but we had the data analyst yeah. here, so you can speak with him also. But we, I know we are using the BigQuery. Thank you. Questions? Okay, I see I, uh, there are no more questions. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>